Through the Mist, Chapter 1, Part 3. When Red reaches the room the lady is in, he realizes that she is the most beautiful woman he has ever seen. This lady has high cheekbones, wide eyes, rounded jaw, slightly shaped Roman nose, and voluptuous lips. Is this really what Red wants to do at this time? Falling in love all over again to get hurt like he did before? Standing in the doorway, he finds it impossible to resist her beauty, charm, and laughter. Red does not know that in just moments, the two of them will recognize each other. Red enters the room and stands to the back of the tour group. This lovely lady is not as nervous doing the tours as she was earlier in the day. She is in the granddaughter's room giving a brief description of the furniture and the items in the room. The lady is a talker and has remembered the speech well. She is having fun with the people on the tour. The lady has a strong southern accent with a slight Texas drawl. She loves playing up her accent. She asks the tour group, Where are you all from? They reply to Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. The lady now has a room full of Yankees, as she would say. She then jokingly tells the tour group that she doesn't have an accent, that she is only faking it. Then she began talking in her natural voice. The tour group loved her and laughed. The lady has now noticed someone standing in the back of the group. She knows the face but cannot put a name with it. You know, you're not the only one with a strong accent, lovely lady. Red smiles, walks over to the chain that divides them, and asks, May I? Go ahead. Red walks in behind the chain that divides the group from the tour guide. He starts telling the group a little bit of history on all the items in the room. The lady is not sure of what he is up to, but she is willing to go along with it. Red finishes his little speech and tells the tour group to have a nice day and for them to continue on to the next room. The lady laughingly said, You should be giving these tours. <laughs> you are good. All I had today was a card with information to read about what was in the room. I was terrified not knowing how much it was the items in the room were. You must know a lot about this type of house and its furnishings. Excuse me, sir, but may I ask your name? You first. You're the lady. My name is Ava Bowie. Well, that is my maiden name. My married name was Thompson. Red turns around and is white as a sheet. Not expecting to run into Ava, he took a moment and used the name Sid told him to use as a cover while doing this investigation. He wanted to tell her who he was, but he needed to investigate this case. You look familiar to me for some reason. Have we met before? Uh, my name is Tim Johnson. Tim Johnson? Are you Scottish? I thought with an accent like that that you would have had a flashier name. Ray doesn't know that Ava has a portrait of his distant grandfather, Neil McLean. The picture of Red's grandfather strongly resembles him. She also has pictures of Red that she found last week in her attic. She had only a few minutes to glance at them, but she could not miss those gray blue eyes. Ava was told that Red was a relative of hers that moved away with his parents years ago. Only having time to glance at the pictures, Ava wasn't sure if this was Red or not. Ava could see that something was wrong with Tim, so she asked. Are you okay? I, I'm just tired from the flight. I also had to drive here from Jackson. I still feel as though I'm moving. Red still could not reveal himself to Ava. He needed more time. He was starting to have feelings for her. To find out that this lady was Ava. He didn't think they were closely related anyhow, but this was a real letdown. 
The lady in charge of the Rosalie came by the room and thanked Ava for her time as a hostess. The lady told Ava that she could leave any time that she was ready. I was going out for dinner tonight at the Selena Casino. Would you like to join me? I know you don't know me, but the owner of the boat does. That's where I'm staying. Yes, that would be nice. But are you sure you're not too tired? Got to eat. How about meeting me at 7 p.m. in the dining room? That's fine. I'll see you then. Red and Ava walked out together and entered the gardens of the Rosalie. Ava asked him to take a few pictures of her in her antebellum dress. Red then walks down to the boat. Ava leaves the Rosalie stopping somewhere before returning home to change her clothes and get ready for her date. After returning home, she walks by the pictures on the table and looks at them. It couldn't be the same man. He wouldn't have any reason to lie about his name. Maybe this man had the look-alike. I've always thought of Red since we were kids, she thought. He was my best friend. I know we were young, but I rem remembered him always in my dream. If it is Red, maybe he is playing a trick on me like he always did when we were young. I will take time to find out who this really is. Ava gets ready and goes to the boat to meet this mystery man.